Holmes, what happened? I feel deathly. And you look it. Let me examine you. Please don't tell me that you've returned to your old habits. But you're dying, Holmes. Your pulse rate is dropping. We need to get you to the hospital immediately. The antidote. <laughs> Give it to me. The antidote? You mean that you're poisoned? Now. Please. Here, drink it all. Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. Hemlock and the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade is here to see you. Mr. Holmes is unable to see anyone at the moment. He is unwell. A good day, Inspector. Ah, Mr. Holmes, I'm glad to find you here. I need your help. This is a strange one. We have brought in two young bankers from the city, sons of lords, members of the chamber, and so on and so forth. They were found stranded in a rowing boat that was drifting on the Thames. A romantic escapade with an unhappy ending, Lestrade. What? Well, yes, they were both in the buff, but... Uh, what? As I said. And they were tied together. You are lacking in imagination, Inspector. Well, no, I'm not. Anyway... There was a banner flapping about in the boat with the RMS Oceanic printed on it and signed by the Merry Men. The Oceanic? Isn't that the largest steamer ever built? Yes. And these two young banker chaps are sons of the owners of the White Star Line, the company that built it. There are rumours of corruption. I'm not interested in politics, Lestrade. I'll keep it then. Here's another one that's a bit more complex and maybe to your liking. It's a murder, but we're unable to find any weapon. We haven't touched anything. It's at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane. A murder? A vanishing weapon? The Roman Baths? That's for us. Watson, fetch your hat! Beautiful place. With a dreadful murder, the body of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe is still in the steam room. It has not been touched, per your usual instructions, Mr. Holmes. I shall be waiting for you here, but please hurry. Good Lord, Holmes. Ah, death with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Let us forget about that. There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. Hmm. The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. The murderer was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. <laughs> Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? Was there anyone else here, apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He will be able to give you more details. Are you able to identify the men who were with the victim in the steam room? Yes. The manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, a lad from the city council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the head. Well, we shall see. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? 
Certainly, sir. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning, and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night? Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at 9 o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until it all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. There is a bottle of champagne on ice in the changing room. Do you have any idea who left it there? There is? Are you quite certain? I didn't pay any attention. Do you believe that it's important? How many people have keys to the steam room? We have just the one key for now, which Sir Gregory gave to me. So, this morning you opened the steam room, and then? I put the key inside my desk, but when they called, I couldn't find it. It had disappeared. I, I, I don't know where it is. Did you leave the baths at any time, or receive any visitors? No, sir. I did not. You are not telling the truth, Mr. Phillips. You left your work this morning, and you went to the post office, where you dispatched a telegram at around 7.30. But how could you... No, I... The telegram was for someone in Manchester. Mr. Holmes, it's imp... I'll tell you everything. I left the baths at 7.20. My sister wrote to me yesterday, and she needed a reply, or our mother is unwell. I was away for 20 minutes, and I closed the baths on my way out. Did you receive a reply from your sister? No, she wasn't meant to. I just told her to pawn my old school uniform so that she could pay for the medication. Did you check to see if the key was still in your desk when you returned? No, I didn't. Please, Mr. Holmes, don't tell the police about this. Sir Gregory would give me the sack. I need this job. I see. Mr. Holmes, I should like to take the suspects to the yard. You can interrogate them there. Any objection? None, Lestrade. File with herbs. Do you know what it is, my dear fellow? It's the St. John's wart flower, Holmes. It's commonly used as a drug against melancholia. However, an overdosage might lead to a rash or even hallucinations. <coughs> this ring was most likely the one that Sir Rodney wore. He removed it before entering the steam room. Why on earth would they wear such a ring? A very pertinent question. Rodney Bentcliffe's notebook. It may contain something of interest. Last pages were torn out. Mr. Holmes, the coroner had... But what are you doing? Tampering with the evidence? I prefer to make them talk. Today, I almost found it. This date will go down in history. Sir Rodney was about to make an outstanding discovery. Wonderful. I could retrieve only the final words. The rest of it is lost. Perhaps the autopsy will assist us in that matter. I'm not sure that I can allow you to inspect the body now. I am sure that you must, Constable. Well... Good day to you, Sir Gregory. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder that took place this morning. Would you mind answering a few questions? Tell me, Mr. Holmes, will I need to stay here for very much longer? You are the manager of the baths, is that correct? Yes. I'm passionate about archaeology. I wanted to restore the ruins. My ambition is to open the baths to the public. Living archaeology can be a profitable business, although now I'm not so sure. I see. When do you wish to begin using the baths? 
when the archaeological researches are over, I will be free to complete the restoration. It is the usual process. Please tell me what happened this morning. The test that we performed this morning was a success. The steam was working well. But then, of course, that awful murder. What did you see? The steam was too thick to see anything. But ask Garrow. He saw the body first. Some melted silver was found inside the steam room brazier. Do you know where it came from? Silver? No. Did you bring a bottle of champagne to the baths? Absolutely not. Sir Rodney did, I think. Are you aware that Mr. Garrow is under a form of medication? Garrow? No. But I never liked that parasite. Do you believe him to be capable of murder? Well, he did have blood on him. Does that make him a murderer? What was your relationship with Sir Rodney Bentcliffe? We were not particularly close. He had an unpleasant temperament. Suspicious. Authoritarian. Unkind. People possessed by genius may be forgiven for their nature, but not by me. Was he obstructive? Not at all. Everything he did led us to greater success. He helped us increase the potential of the building. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behavior? Look, I'm not a suspicious fellow, but I think that he had professional interests elsewhere that he did not wish us to know about. Why should you think that? Where? I have no idea. But after all, it was not my business. How was the work progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather slowly, I would say. Sir Gregory, could you please explain this letter? You expressed the wish to call off the research work at the baths. It was all about Blinkhorn. He was merrily digging away and taking very little care about it, ruining everything and finding nothing of any value. But the arrival of Sir Rodney changed your mind? Sir Rodney's work was extremely promising, and it was good for the baths' publicity. Though yes, I changed my mind. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Uh, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Uh, my name is Percival Blinkhorn. What is your occupation? I'm an archaeologist, uh, specializing in the Roman period. I'm working on several excavation sites at present, including the baths at Strand Lane. Hmm. Can you tell me more about the baths? Well, we're hoping to retrieve a great many interesting artifacts from the site, and to list any items of value before their eventual restoration and exhibition. And has it been successful? It has, thanks to Sir Rodney. Can you tell me what you saw today? Well, we entered the steam room and we all went to sit down. Uh, the steam was particularly dense and I didn't see anything much further after that. I just heard Mr. Garrow shouting, but we all ran for the door and bumped into each other. I was very alarmed by this point. What did you do? Well, the door was stuck, and with all the steam, it was quite frightening. I was barely able to see my own feet. Garrow was covered in blood. Do you believe that Garrow killed Sir Rodney? Oh, no. Garrow couldn't harm a fly. We discovered some melted silver in the brazier. Did you put it there? No. Silver, you say? No, I don't know how it got there. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? No, I did not. What can you tell me about Garrow? Well, he always looks so sad. And uh, he has been acting strangely lately. He complains about voices and visions. I will keep an eye on him because I'm worried. What was your relationship with Sir Rodney? Well... I couldn't say that he was a kind man, no, uh, but he was talented. I felt a great admiration for him, I, I must say. Was it your first collaboration? I had met Sir Rodney briefly once in Egypt, and I had shared my researches with him. Uh, surprisingly, my work did convince him to come here. He arrived only a couple of months ago. Surprisingly? Well, Sir Rodney is, uh, was a god. A cold man, and so very secretive, too. But I learned so much from him. I can't believe that he's dead. How well were your researchers progressing before Sir Rodney's arrival? Rather well. This letter reveals that Sir Gregory was prepared to put a stop to your work. Um, uh, yes. But since Sir Rodney's arrival, he had calmed down. He allowed us to work. Uh, I'm not sure what they agreed on. Hmm. What will happen now that Sir Rodney is dead? 
Well, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but if it's needed, I will fight to defend Sir Rodney's expectations. Can you recall any recent event that would occur to you now as being a little strange? Well, yesterday we had a small argument. Is that all? No. Sir Rodney informed me that he was to attend the London Archaeological Congress with me. Then he advised me of quite the opposite. And rather aggressively, too. Do you recognize this ring? Uh, certainly. It's the famous Aswan ring. Sir Rodney brought it back from his last campaign in Egypt. And he kept it for himself? Sir Rodney has uh, had his own particular ideas of archaeology. A good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? Ah, uh, uh, I am Tristram Garrow. What is your occupation? I, I am a councillor at the uh, district chamber. And what were you doing at the baths? Well, I, I follow the researches. I am uh, I interested in, in archaeology. You follow them? Yes. So many things happened and w we need to know. Or perhaps it's better hidden. I beg your pardon, Mr. Garrow. I, uh, I, I meant nothing, but by that I, I apologize. Please try to recall what you saw today. The room was so, so hot, I, I had to remove my glasses. I was not feeling so very well in, in there. But you found the body. I saw the knife, you know. Flying through the air, I, I, I saw the blood. I tried to escape, I, I don't remember. You saw the knife? What did it look like? Everything was as if in a nightmare. It all happened so fast. The knife was shining like, like gold. Did you place the bottle of champagne in the changing room? What? No. What was it like to work with Sir Rodney? It was like uh, working with a genius. He was a hard man. But then, you, you know, this world is hard. There are always people who want to steal from you. And he, uh... He trusted me, but, uh, oh. Are you feeling unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. He is I. Oh, I remember. Oh, I, I feel so sorry. Do you need anything? I, uh, I, I, I feel bad. I, uh, I, I hear... No, nothing. I, 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 I'm better now. Had Sir Rodney exhibited any recent strange behaviour? Well, he, he had been rather secretive these past few days. Last Thursday, for, for example, I, I saw him leave. When he returned, it, it was very late. He showed me some wet coins, Roman coins, and uh, he, he started to laugh. This is the coin that, that he showed me. It is from the third century. It must be very rare. No, I, 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 I don't know. His ring! Oh, it should be destroyed. Why do you say that? It is a cursed ring, digging dark secrets. Really? I... Uh, it is after me now. I know it. Uh, I shouldn't have worked on it in the workshop. It's too late now. Thank you. Thank you. This will help me to calm down. Do be careful with the dosage. I, I will. I mean it. God, are you all right? I wonder how this could have happened. <coughs> yes, it is somewhat treacherous. <clears throat> Fortunately, I am unscathed. To where does this corridor lead? To the Frigidarium, the coal room. Barely unscathed and by a very small margin. And treacherous is an understatement. Watson, pack your bag. We are visiting a location in St. Albans marked on Sir Rodney's map. Frigidarium. It is located at the Roman Baths in London. Let's try to create an object from silver by using the mold. It will take a minute to melt the silver with my gas burner. Done. Now I can proceed further. The mold is hot. I should wait for it to cool down. A homemade silver knife. Mr. Holmes, we've cleared the corridor to the Frigidarium. You can visit it now. Thank you, Mr. Phillips.
The signs are pointing to this bust. The fire casts a shadow upon the floor. The paintings in the baths are focused on Mithras, I understand. Yes, they are what make this place remarkable. And that is why Sir Rodney came here? He believed that the golden knife, which is an ancient ritual item, was hidden somewhere around the baths. I admit that it would be wonderful if it were true. And you are not concerned by the reputation of this artifact? <laughs> You mean the curse. Before someone is dead, it is a blessing. After they are dead, well, then it becomes a curse. <laughs> what can you tell me about Mithras? Oh, so much. It was the core of our work. Why do you ask? Were you seeking the golden knife? Ah, I see you are an amateur. Yes, the golden knife was our grail. It is said that it bears the only text explaining the ritual of the cult of Mithras. I understand. I read something about immortality. A myth. Uh, the knife would provide immortality only to the worthy one. And yet it is cursed, and it would kill you if you are not initiated. Did you expect to find the golden knife at the baths? Well, Sir Rodney thought that it might be there. Uh, did you observe the knife representations there? They are so extraordinary, and we had hoped that... Oh, it is a tragedy that he has passed away, taking all of his secrets with him. As soon as I've been released, I will continue Sir Rodney's researches in his memory. The bridge is ready. Now I must pass it. Awesome. Come here. I have found something. Golden knife. How to get it? The golden knife of Mithras. A long lost relic has resurfaced. Watson, it is time to conclude this case. I'm feeling rather uncomfortable. Why have I been put into these cuffs? I fear that you had better get used to them, Mr. Blinkhorn. They are your reward for the murder of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. What? No, that's a lie. It is regrettable, for you are a talented archaeologist. I will request that you are placed in a prison where you are unable to dig an escape tunnel. That is, of course, if they decide that you shall live. You The consulting are... detective who salutes your intelligence in performing the perfect crime, yes. But also the gentleman who detests your motivation. You know nothing. You wish to be the one who would reveal this to the world. Is that the golden knife? How... I also like to dig, you see. I only followed your trail. Such a pity that there is always someone willing to steal your credit, wouldn't you say? And there was the chance of a lifetime. You had to take it. It was not to be shared. It... Oh. But now I am here, and there is no one who will stop the tread of justice, Mr. Blinkhorn. Goodbye. Mm.